Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier podcast. We're here with uh, a mentor and uh, Dan Johnston. We're, he's going to come to us from a background of, of writing and uh, a little bit on sales and and um, some of the creative works as, as well. Um, so he'll tell us a little bit about uh, what he's up to now and then um, some of his influences so we can learn a few of his uh, Swike, the, the stuff he wish he knew earlier uh, as he went through his uh, career journey and uh, what, what's up for him in the future as well. So Dan, if you can let us know, uh, what are you up to right now? And then we'll get into a little bit more about your backstory. Absolutely. Thank you, Lukey. Uh, so hello, everyone. I'm Daniel. Um, as uh, Lukey mentioned, I am uh, coming from an English background with a little bit of uh, computer science thrown in there. Um, I am currently a quality control supervisor at uh, BreezeMax Web. Um, as a small little startup company, which essentially builds uh, websites and helps out with um, advertising solutions for um, other companies and to help in the online world. And I'm actually very excited because um, I've actually been in, in the process of moving in my position. Um, I recently accepted uh, a position at the Canada Revenue Agency. I'll be moving in there in some, to more of a technical role. Um, that's uh, just sort of a little bit in the works at the moment, but uh, it's something where I'm, I'm very excited to sort of transition in that sort of um, method. But uh, yeah, absolutely. And I'm, uh, as of right now, uh, my current role is uh, in a quality control supervisor, uh, a little bit more of uh, the sort of the creative side. So I have... Um, on the one hand, uh, you have the little bit of uh, making sure that websites um, meet sort of quality standards of my my work, um, whether that be through uh, the actual language that is being talked about, or whether it be through the back end, um, being able to make sure that things are working properly functioning, or um, just in general, making sure that clients are um, happy. Uh, with the sort of the quality that is coming out from our work. So a little bit of a diverse sort of um, position there and definitely a little bit different in that sort of sense too. Cool. So uh, congrats on, on kind of the new role that you'll be moving to uh, in a couple of weeks and, and maybe we'll get an update from you later on in terms of how that's going. But uh, let, let's step back and kind of get to you as, as a kid. So, so what were you like growing up? Uh, were you always... Um, interested in in QA, like writing and, and things like that. And, and I know we've talked uh, before where obviously you want to write a, a book and it's more kind of on the, the fantasy realm. Um, and and uh, you also got into kind of gemology and, and sales uh, throughout your, your career too. So kind of walk us through some of the, the major milestones and, and some of the influences along the way. Absolutely. Uh, so quality control is definitely something that... Um, is not really had been on my radar at all um, from most of my career, uh, if not within the last couple of months even. Uh, starting out when I was uh, fairly small, I was uh, mostly interested in a lot of things like even rocks and minerals, things where I would be able to just sort of collect rocks and find them on the ground and break them open on sewer grates just to see what's inside of them. And uh, it was sort of my small passion that I would be able to sort of take in that way. Um, over, over time, I guess I sort of developed a little bit of an, a passion for writing as well. Um, just sort of always been a reader. I've, I would devour books as a kid to the point where it was never enough. You would have uh, books coming in all the time, um, sometimes through the library, sometimes through um, gifts or things that I would pick up. And it was just always part of who I was as a person and something where I just enjoyed um, escaping into other worlds and finding new stories. Uh, so as in initially, I actually was something more along the lines of um, looking towards the gemological side. So I actually took it upon myself to go to school 
um, on taking an online course with the Gemological Institute of America uh, to, to get my certificate uh, to become a, let's see if I get this right, accredited jewelry professional. Um, so that was actually a six month course, which I took online, I believe is, is still available today, um, which essentially broke me out into the jewelry uh, side of things. And so I, after my first job, which most people, they sort of start out in uh, the food and fast, ser fast food service area. Uh, I spent uh, about two years at McDonald's uh, to sort of start out my career. But after that and sort of gaining my certificate, I moved into uh, retail sales. And I moved as uh, a sales professional uh, with a small com a smaller family owned business called uh, Charm Diamond Centers. Mm -hmm. um, it was there I worked for about three years, sort of working with jewelry of all kinds, from uh, gemstones to diamonds and, and pendants to rings and everything in between. And it was sort of taking that passion that I had as a kid for sort of the sparkly things and being able to bring it to uh, the world and uh, be able to show off some of the things that I really was passionate about. And it originally started as something as, um, really like I, I enjoyed it purely as sort of a hobby and a passion in that way. Uh, but it sort of spiraled into something where I could use that and turn it into my, um, into a, a job that I was really very happy with. Um, and I also feel as though it was a really great time where I was able to develop some wonderful skills. I was not, I was a fairly shy kid. It was something where I wasn't overly um, expressive or something, things like that. I would be more an introverted and keeping to my books and things like that. But I felt that though breaking out into the retail world was something that really helped me to be able to express myself and forced me to talk to people in uh, an atmosphere which was a little bit more comfortable for me. So it was something where I could take one of my hobbies, which was my genealogical stuff, and bring it to something where I would be able to really talk to people about something I was excited about. And I eventually moved up in the world. So I went from Charm Diamond Centers after three years. I moved actually down the hall in the same mall uh, to Maison Burks. Um, where I spent about a year uh, doing a similar thing and a, a little bit more high-end jewelry. So I moved, I moved a little bit to uh, some of the the greater um, the greater great. I don't want to say greater things, but it was something where uh, it was definitely different and a different experience and a higher-end jewelry. Um, Unfortunately, it was something where the pandemic hit uh, sometime around that point. And uh, in March of 2020, I found myself like many other people uh, without a job. And naturally with the retail spaces, they just simply closed down and there was nowhere to be able to work uh, for someone like me. And so in a sense, I had to redefine myself uh, over that time and it took it, I took it upon myself to continue to learn. Uh, at that point, uh, in June 2019, I had actually come out of um, my English degree um, at school. And so for the, the following year, uh, they, it, I actually went to school with the UT, uh, UTSC, which uh, they were very gracious to be able to give you LinkedIn learning, to be able to have uh, for a whole year if you wanted to continue your education. So when the time that the pandemic came along, I suddenly found myself with a whole lot of time. And so I decided that I would take advantage of this opportunity uh, to better myself and learn a little bit more about some of the writing aspects that I had been uh, cultivating since I was little. And so I decided to look into uh, more towards a copywriting side of, side of things. Uh, copywriter uh, is someone who essentially writes things for marketing uh, or um, essentially for advertising purposes. 
You look at uh, people who would do things for advertisements, uh, perhaps products, uh, product, product descriptions, um, blogs, and that sort of idea, where it, essentially if you need copy or words, uh, that's where the copywriter would come in. Now, it's not just as simple as being able to make words. You also have to make sure that the words are appropriate for the industry and uh, making sure that uh, they are properly functioning for what you're, what you're looking for. So especially in the online world, you have things called search engine optimization, which you would have to be, essentially look at the words that you're writing and uh, make them optimized for the keywords that particular people are searching for um, on search engines. And the more that you do this sort of thing, the easier it is for people to find you in the online world. And so that's sort of where I started to learn um, after I was um, in the pandemic. And uh, for a little while, it was mostly sort of practicing my writing and figuring things out that way. And in fact, uh, it was around this time, around June of 2020, that I found Luki, uh, who was able to help me out in that sort of way. And uh, we actually had been talking for a little while about my aspirations and where I wanted to go. And he suggested that I started writing for Focus to, focusinspired.com, which uh, you I still write to this day, um, approximately a blog a week. Uh, where if you haven't checked it out, I would highly, <laughs> I would definitely tell you to do so. Um, and uh, from there, I actually was recognized from my current company, Breeze Max Web, uh, where they saw my work, they saw some of the things that I was doing with Luki and um, the blogs that I was performing, and they decided to take me on as a content writer, which uh, was a really great start for me in a brand new industry. And uh, really was exciting for me in that sort of way. Um, three, about three months into my new position after doing content for a little while, uh, they started to recognize that I was a little more detail oriented than uh, somebody who was just meant for content. And so they were seeing how I was sort of picking apart the websites and seeing different ways that I would be able to help make it a little bit better and something where the quality if they wanted to be able to make sure that it was going out properly or if a website was already up and I would see these little mistakes here and there. And so they decided to take a chance on me. And so uh, at that point, they decided to move me into a quality control supervisor role. And it's from there that I've been ever since, uh, of course, up until today, uh, which um, in the next little while, of course, we'll see where it goes. But uh, that's sort of my my career in a little bit of a nutshell and where i've sort of come from that's amazing so thank thanks for sharing all of the uh kind of journeys into it and and we'll look forward to hearing about what comes next but i wanted to dive a little bit more into kind of like like back early in the day so so maybe well as early as you want to take it like uh as you're finding these rocks and pulling them apart because what i'd love to hear is kind of how these little interests and passions develop and then more interestingly, possibly, is how you could take that and say, hey, you know what, I can actually turn this into a job, maybe a career, maybe some sort of interest later on. But it, these little things can be quite helpful for folks. So can you talk about, I don't know, your best find in terms of like the rock <laughs> that you remember or whatever, or uh, like, like, what did you do with it? Or how did you start cultivating that? And, and it's probably not intentional at the time, but uh, how, how do you kind of develop that, that interest? And then the, the, the point of, well, taking a, a certification, right? That must have been an interesting one where most people don't think about that. Um, those are the two things that I'd want to kind of dive into more and probably a couple of other things as well, but starting with those ones. So can you describe a little bit about uh, that experience? Sure. So as I was growing up, uh, it was essentially, obviously not every rock that you find has something in it, <laughs> sure. but that was, uh, that was okay to me. It was something where, um, if you find a rock, it's always a chance that you have something uh, and then you would be able to find it. And so it was something where I would just sort of start, I think it was mainly sort of collecting rocks on the beach where it's really started, where 
oftentimes you will find um, these smaller rocks, which are a little bit more of the gemstone style, where they would have like the little bits of rose quartz or the quartz or um, things like that, where it's a little bit more of the pure crystal rather than something hidden in a rock. Um, I think after after I sort of started collecting those things, um, I sort of started to find rocks with things in them. So you would have um, little crystals, which would be stuck in a rock uh, on the side, um, or it would be something where you accidentally drop a rock on another rock and so it splits open, there's something inside like a fossil. And um, it was something like that, which really just sort of, it piqued my interest to the point where the entire side of my house was just covered in rocks. And so it got to that point where eventually uh, I was just sort of constantly fascinated with these things. Naturally with books and uh, my passion for reading, I would also gain literature on this sort of thing where I would learn about rocks or I would take a guidebook with me to make sure that I would find, uh, if I find something, I would be able to understand what it is. And so I think the thing that was really something which uh, really caught my attention was the variety that you would find in a lot of these things. And uh, so it it's something where uh, it didn't matter what it was. I always found it interesting and I would probably say the most interesting find that I found would would probably be just this fairly large amethyst crystal, which mm -hmm. I found on the side of a stream, um, probably about the size of uh, my thumb, uh, something like about that size, yeah. which for a crystal is fairly large um, that you would be finding. And so I, I still have it. I'm not quite sure where I have it, but it is something where I, I've really, um, it's really sort of spiraled, spiraled from there and sort of being able to see that variety. And to be able to have a passion like that, where you just sort of want to know more and just, it, it just seemed like the natural transition for me to be able to move into something where uh, if I wanted to, um, see all these different things and learn more about rocks and minerals and things like that, a jewelry store almost seemed like a natural fit. And it was something where I was still fairly curious. And I, I felt that um, the, the certification was something that was a little bit worthwhile for me, not only to be able to break into the industry, but also just as a purely curiosity thing. Uh, it's something where I've, I actually found that I had done enough research that I was seeing little bits of my research here and there and what I was learning in the course while also learning new things, of course. But uh, it was just absolutely fascinating to me. And to be able to have something from a well-respected indus um, industry leader, uh, it's something where I was really quite excited for it. And I think I answered your question if I missed something in there. Uh, what I took from that is to follow your curiosity, right? So it's just a matter of getting into that and saying, oh, okay, this rock and you drop it and wow, there's more to it inside. And what about this? And then uh, getting books on it and getting more more uh, versed in why or, or what and, and all those sort of things and progress to say, hey, you know what, I could actually turn that interest and and um, find, find a, a, a job <laughs> that kind of relates to it and landing that uh, role in a jewelry store, which uh, I mean, that's not the typical kind of a doctor, lawyer, accountant, engineer. But uh, I mean, if you're doing things that you're interested and curious about, why not, right? Uh, in, instead of just doing something that you're kind of quote unquote supposed to do <laughs> versus something that you actually enjoy doing. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about kind of on, on the reading side. So, so we connected on kind of the writing area, right? Uh, so obviously the, the, the writing probably started with reading uh, and then what kind of spurned you into kind of writing more or wanting to write more and then uh, you, you want to at some point write a book. So uh, walk us through kind of like the journey of kind of learning and, and, and uh, getting better at writing um, through your uh, university and then, and then afterwards in learning and, and then other areas where you've kind of developed yourself from a, from a, from a writing perspective. Sure. So 
In terms of uh, where I started in English, um, it was essentially with books. And so I would often be reading uh, some of the, there were some of the books that I was uh, reading as a kid. My favorites were Goosebumps. Uh, I also absolutely loved uh, The Magic Tree House. Right. Um, and it was something where some of these books, oh, sorry, and The Hardy Boys, and uh, you would have some of these mystery novels and things like that. And so it was kind of these books where uh, you take these fantastical elements and to be able to explore these curiosities and different worlds. And it was something where I was always fascinated with world building and how, uh, how you get these different, um, I, I want to say fantasy elements of the, of the stories. And it was also purely just from a joy of reading that I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed books as well. I would be part of book clubs in school. Um, there was, uh, I believe in high school or um, thereabouts, there was something called the Silver Birch, the Red Maple um, book clubs and things like that, where you would have these chosen books for you, where you would have... Um, to be able to see these sort of uh, different diversity of authors and different books and things like that. Uh, and it was through that, that I actually started to uh, read one of my favorite auth authors as a kid was Kenneth Opal uh, in his Airborne series. And so again, fairly uh, science fiction, fantasy oriented, uh, but it didn't even have to be kids uh, to be fantasy or science fiction. There are a lot of novels uh, that are out there that are also for adults for science fiction fantasy. Some of the things that I read on early that I, I would say is of note, you have things like War of the Worlds uh, from George Orwell or H.G. Wells, my apologies. And uh, you uh, also have uh, things like Oryx and Crake from uh, Margaret Atwood and it was some of these things which sort of introduced into the world where I think I was introduced through the Silver Birch and Red Maple programs, which they were touted as these grand, amazing books that were by these well-respected authors. And yet they were still some, something where uh, they were considered science fiction or fantasy. And it was something that was really an eye-opener for me to be able to say, oh, science fiction, fantasy, some of these things which are sort of like the imaginative, the, the creative, they're not just for kids. These are some things which you can enjoy as an adult and it's well-respected and gained many awards uh, through that sort of idea. So uh, it sort of opened my mind to sort of see new different ways that I could uh, explore content and different books uh, in that sort of way. Um, towards the writing side, I actually, uh, I actually hated English to begin with. Interesting. It's something where in high school, I actually uh, was looking at English as um, I didn't get it. There was all these uh, significances and um, being able to sort of figure out what the author meant. And uh, just, it felt like I was trying to read an author's mind and of course, nobody can read minds. That's not something you can do. But at the same time, it was very frustrating to me. And there was, uh, I believe it was in grade 10 or so, where I met uh, one of my uh, people in class, uh, in my English class, who uh, he was very good at it. And he was getting high marks. He was doing great. And I asked him, I said, what do you do? why, what is your secret? How are you doing this in the English, in this English course? And he said, honestly, I just wing it. It's something where you look at, you look at these books and you just sort of feel what feels right. And it's usually when that, when you look at it that way, it's, it sort of comes out uh, in a way that is often very similar to what the author was thinking. And even if it isn't, that's okay. It's still something where you'd be able to find your own significance um, in the novel itself. 
And it's a worthwhile uh, way to be able to look at it. And so I went from looking at English as a, what did the author mean to how is it significant to you? Right. And it was that real shift uh, in perspective that it really changed my opinion of what English was. And it reflected in my marks as a result. It was something where I've really started to enjoy the experience again. And English started to become one of my favorite classes. And I really owe it to my classmate at that point to sort of bring me back into that sort of feeling. Um, writing again, um, it was something where I sort of did it on the side. It was not really uh, obviously something where I felt that um, I, I could really make anything out of it. It was really just a, a hobby again. And you always hear all these stories about sort of the starving artist and the, the people who um, write for a living and are constantly just at it day and night and making just making just enough to get by. But it's something where I, I slowly learned over time that um, this, this doesn't have to be the case. It's something where you, I actually, I'm getting ahead of myself because that's a lot later in my, in my writing, but getting back to it here, uh, getting, I really started to get into, or get into writing when I, I was actually playing a game online where I had a bunch of different, uh, I believe it was a, a dragon egg collecting game that a lot of people uh, sort of got into on Facebook. And there was a community which was in, in, that, uh, in that group, which essentially would hang out on these chats and online forums. And for the most part, I started off sort of with the game and just sort of like a pastime just to be able to trade these eggs back and forth until one person sort of brought me aside and said, hey, uh, you look like someone that would be uh, really interested in doing some writing and that sort of thing, because they, they were noticing sort of the way that I would be uh, interacting and things like that. They said, would you be interested? I said, sure, why not? And so they brought me aside into this smaller group and uh, we started writing on a, almost like a role play series where we would have this really grand world which had already been in place from when these people had been building the world previous to my arrival and it was it was something so amazing uh to be able to be inserted into this grand fantastical world where they seemed to know everything about it and i just couldn't get enough of it it was something where at the time i was fairly mostly still into the reading side of things that I felt as though in order to explore this story, I would have to participate when through the role play side of things and writing and that sort of idea. And so as I sort of started to develop my character and to be able to continue to write in that sort of way, um, it just sort of spiraled into something where I enjoyed the writing aspect as well. And uh, being able to create my own stories and to, to make this idea that uh, I don't have to have a book to be able to say, I, to escape to another world. It's something where I can express my creativity and I can show off um, what I can do in this initially smaller group, but then eventually uh, I had hoped to something a little bit larger. And so in my university career, uh, I had started off in computer science. It was something where uh, I had really had the preconceived notion that my, because my, com my parents were people who were in computer science and had done very well, it was something that although I had a technical side to me, um, it was something where I wanted to sort of continue. And it wasn't, I think, until much later in my university career that I sort of started exploring the creative writing programs. And so I started to write in those and sort of, it's a workshop style course where you would be able to write short stories that uh, you would share with the rest of the class. 
and uh, they would critique it. And for each week, you would have two or three stories that you would have to read or two stories and you would write one. And so we would go in the next class as a round table, sort of getting an idea as to um, feedback from the rest of your peers. And it was so fascinating to me to be able to read these stories from my peers as well as contribute something to them as well. And it's really through this sort of process that I cultivated my writing and just love of, of writing in general. And so it, it was from then on that I really wanted to knew that writing was going to be sort of a piece of me from then on. And I have these grand plans of uh, writing a book sometime in the future. Uh, it is something where I would love to be able to either write science fiction, fantasy, or both um, sometime in the future to be able to be a published author of some kind. And it's, it's sort of like this little side project for now, but um, it's something where I definitely want to sort of explore in the future. And for the moment, I've, I've had a little bit of a foray into it in my career with uh, as a content writer and for you as well, Luki, but uh, it is something where I definitely want it to be part of my life and uh, will for sure be continuing on, um, I guess for the rest of it, I would hope. <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to seeing or reading, <laughs> whatever that is. And uh, I think some of the encouragement that I'm providing is to uh, just take steps like every uh, month, day, uh, week, or however much you can um, manage, but actually put the time because uh, that lofty goal that could happen one day starts with doing something today, right? But what I took from your story is, again, that curiosity following kind of that interest. And uh, another part is also to, to put yourself out there. So participate in the community. So you you were curious and, and got into this community, but part of why you were able to uh, kind of take advantage and find that thing that, that you feel passionate about and you love is that uh, you participated. If you had not participated, uh, probably wouldn't have gone the same way, right? Uh, by putting yourself out there um, and, and um taking some of the feedback and, and just learning and growing. I think that was uh, definitely useful. And then, uh, yeah, we probably get into the, uh, how did the conversation between uh, your techie parents who uh, started you in computer science and then now you want to switch to English? What? <laughs> like that, that conversation must've been an, an interesting one, but uh, I want to send, T take a few minutes to, to, to talk about uh, kind of that, that foray into sales. So you talked about how you started as, as, as many do in kind of retail with McDonald's and you, the, the family business and, and then uh, moving up to Maison Burks. <laughs> and then uh, how did that help um, or, or, or hinder, I guess, your, your career progression? Um, and, and what are some of the, the, the learnings that you took from those experiences? Yeah, absolutely. So I always think that, um, I definitely think it's something which is very worthwhile for a lot of people to be able to go into an industry like this. Uh, a lot of people look at it and they turn their nose down at it and just sort of say, you know, this is, this is grunt work. This is something where you don't really want to have this kind of job for as a little, a, as little time as possible, essentially, because it's, it gets you nowhere. It's, it doesn't teach you anything. It's just something to give you money while you're in school. And to that, I say, absolutely not. This is something where I learned a whole lot in terms of in every job that I've been in, um, starting with even with McDonald's in that sort of uh, in that sort of way, where McDonald's really taught me uh, in terms of being able to work under pressure. It was something where you you're under a lot of uh, constraint to be able to manage a whole lot of things at once and uh, to be able to uh, manage your time, make sure that you're um, on top of everything. You've rare, very rarely had a break uh, where you would have to take a moment to be able to think for yourself. You have to be on your feet. You have to be working. You have to be going quickly, especially in the kitchen side of things. And so Although it was a very difficult um, sometimes to be able to do uh, keep up and that sort of thing, I did find it very valuable in sort of teaching me these sort of things. Um, on the retail side, I, I'm even more baffled as to why people don't understand 
uh, the value in this sort of a, a position. It's something where I feel coming into my first retail job, I was not nearly as well able, obviously now I'm tripping over my words and completely ruining my point, but it's something where I was unable to speak as coherently and uh, as easily as I am today to be able to just talk to people and get my voice out there. And it was something where being able to put myself in a position where I'm actually talking to people every single day, constantly, and just practice even in a social area. I think a lot of people can benefit from that sort of an idea. And yeah, some people, they may be not so interested in the sales side of things, but there's there are still very, a lot of retail jobs and variations that I still accomplish the same thing where it doesn't necessarily have to be sales and commission heavy. This I took uh, positions where it was actually not entirely commission. It was something where you would get uh, a base salary as well as a commission. So you didn't have as much of a pressure to be able to go and just sell. It was something where you could, you could make a lot of money if you decided to um, get yourself out there and be uh, excellent. Uh, but it was also something where they wanted to make sure that you weren't feeling as though you're, you, if you're having a bad day, then you're absolutely crushed uh, because you're just on commissions. That's the only way that you're going to be making money. And it's, it's something where I was looking back on it now, it was something I very much appreciated uh, in my particular uh, line of work. It is something where a lot of people, there are some people who prefer just a base salary where commission is off the table. They could go in, feel comfortable just to be able to do their day-to-day -day work. And there are other people who enjoy that high, fast-paced commission-based um, idea. And there is no wrong answer. It is something where you look at the kind of work that you have there and you just do what is comfortable for you. And to be able to go uh, into whatever sort of an idea that that is, perhaps you would want to be uh, someone more towards the, just the customer service end where you help someone find something that they're looking for and cash them out at the end. And that's, that's okay. You're still getting a lot of experience to be able to talk to people, get, interact with a wide variety of people, gaining connections. Uh, it's something where even while I was working uh, at my retail jobs, I had a number of people who were in fascinating industries that I would be talking to on a daily basis, uh, gaining connections. I still have a stack of business cards, which I gained from them. And it's something where you'd never know where the kind of uh, connections that you get. And even in something like this, it, you gain people that you still, con you still talk to at the end of the day. And I honestly, I, I think that just from that standpoint alone, you, retail is a, a wonderful experience for a lot of people to have, but uh, there are so many reasons beyond that, that I could take another hour to be able to go in through that. Um, with regards to your other point about uh, being moving into um, English and having sort of uh, the parents' perspective from the computer science side of things, um, it is something where my parents definitely had uh, this uh, this idea of moving through uh, computer science was one of the best ways to be able to. Uh, gain a career and it it is some I, I agree with them in a way to be able to say that it is a very lucrative career but it, it's not something where uh, everybody would be able to fit into that sort of thing and they understood that to a degree it I was I, I was also in a very t difficult position where for a long time I had no idea what it was I wanted to do because it was something where I felt there was this a large amount of pressure on the one side to follow my parents' footsteps and be in this amazing industry that had so much potential. 
But on the other side, I also had this opinion that I had a lot more creativity in me than I had the analytical. Sure, I do have the analytical, but not nearly as strongly. And it's something where I really felt that as soon as I recognized that, it was an eye-opener for me to be able to explore some of the things that I didn't even think were possible. Something that I thought was a dead end with uh, writing and some just as the starving artist sort of idea. It, just with a little more research, I could discover copywriting. And it was something where I would be able to take some of my passions and bring them to the world as something that I'm really good at. And I, I discovered that just because I'm enjoying it doesn't mean that it's something that you shouldn't be doing because it's easy or it's something that's, um, it's something that because, because you're enjoying it, it couldn't possibly go anywhere. That's, imp that's ludicrous. It's, it's absolutely like if you enjoy your job, if you love what you're doing, then you will be that much more successful. And it's something where you should never feel as though uh, you're giving up opportunities uh, to be able to uh, go and find what your dream is because really the dream is where you're going to excel and finding that niche where you fit uh, the best, that's, that's the goal for anybody. And I feel as though um, I'm still looking for that it is something where I have a whole lot of ideas that are flowing around and figuring out uh, where it is that I really belong and sort of thinking, taking all the pieces of me apart and figuring out what fits the best into my career. But I'm, I think over the last uh, year or two, I think I've really started to get a better understanding of who I am as a person. And of course, being able to grow in the future and move into something, uh, move into something maybe a little bit more, um, more of a fit for me. That's always the goal to be able to grow as a person and continue uh, to find your new path. Yeah, what I took from that is, uh, well, on, on the sales side is uh, really give it a shot and, and use it as a uh, practice and uh, make the most out of the opportunity because there's so many great things that you could acquire, uh, be it practicing your communication or how to interact with others, developing relationships and, and how to build those over time. Uh, there's a lot of great things. And, and sometimes uh, with or without the pressure of commissions and things like that, it's really up to you depending on how you excel. And then on the side of uh, like influences from parents and things like that, well, really taking the time to kind of explore what's out there. Like, is that path the right one for you? And um, if, if you have no better options, then maybe you follow it. But if you take a little bit of time to research and think about other areas, explore, talk to people that are doing things that might be uh, interesting to you, hey, there might be this other world out there that you could find. And um, you're still figuring it out just like uh, just like I am. Right? Uh, and now I'm a, a little bit further ahead. So, so I know a bit more of, of what really uh, interests me. Uh, but who knows what will happen in a year, five years when I decide to find something else and, and, and same with you. So for those uh, listening, it's a matter of figuring out, okay, well, let, let's uh, take the time and, and make those conscious decisions in terms of where you want to uh, like direct your, your career and, and all that sort of stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, and, and have fun in the process. So, so as we start to, to wrap things up, what are, what are a couple of the, the swipe, the stuff I wish I knew earlier that if you could go back to kind of young Dan, when, when he was in maybe some more troublesome times where he, he was just trying to make decisions or doing whatever, um, what's kind of one or two things that, that you would share with him uh, in order to, uh, kind of help him out in his career journey. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's something where it, it's, it seems silly to say, but uh, b with someone who was so curious to begin with, uh, with the journey from the rocks to the books and learning and that sort of thing, and always trying to better myself in that sort of way and learn new things, I almost want to say that I, I should have been more curious. Oh, okay. It was something where... I, I closed doors where I felt there were none. And it was, it, it was something where I feel like if you're, not, if you're not trying to find who you are and you're trying to fit into a mold 
that just doesn't seem like you, uh, then then you're really doing your not doing yourself a service. It's something where you really need to listen to yourself, listen to what you are, uh, what you're enjoying, what you're doing, and find where you're where you naturally fit rather than forcing yourself and sort of molding yourself into like take putting a square peg in a round hole kind of a thing. And although uh, I, I do say that while I was sort of exploring in that sort of way and finding out what I didn't, it uh, didn't really fit in, I did find that some of the things I learned in that time were some very valuable things that I still carry forward to today. So the other thing that I would say is don't discount anything. If you have something that you've learned, if you've had something that you're, you're passionate about, take it into consideration. Make sure that you are um, taking all of the skills that are available to you and making sure that you actually put them into something that um, make sense or at least um, be able to move forward and uh, find a direction from that. Because if you ignore what you are passionate about and consider it only about as a hobby, you're going to find yourself very directionless very fast. And it's something that I discovered uh, while I was in university while taking my undergraduate degree for a grand total of about nine years. Mm. And it's something where I look back on it now and I'm grateful for the experiences that I have and it's made who I am today. But it is definitely something where if I just looked at it at the beginning and if I just took the time to be able to um, make sure that I was actually being true to myself and understanding where I needed to go, I probably would have been there a lot sooner. And I know that I mentioned that uh, my parents had uh, sort of influenced me towards the computer science uh, aspect of things and um, having that sort of expectation uh, in a sort of, if, if you will. But uh, I, also, I, I also wanted to note that they have been very supportive of, of me uh, through this entire endeavor. And I felt uh, very grateful for that uh, support. And even through, uh, even through the uh, transition to a sort of more creative side of things, although they were initially looking at it as, okay, uh, that's a, a little bit of a different path, they obviously wanted what was best for me and came around very quickly to be able to say, yes, we, um, we support you. We want you to do what's best for you. And so I've, I've felt very grateful for that. And they've been um, guiding, guiding me as well through my career process. And in fact, has been a, a very large part as to why I'm moving on now uh, to my new and b bigger and better things. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for that as well. So um, definitely something that uh, I would say to a lot of people is uh, the, the last stuff I wish I knew earlier, I guess, is uh, your parents always have your best interest at heart, um, for the most part. And uh, it's definitely something where uh, you may be, you may feel like they're not, um, they, they might not understand you um, to some degree sometimes, but they definitely have a lot of wisdom that they have to share with you. And they are definitely some people that you should be listening to if you are, um, again, going back to don't discount anything, um, taking everything into account. And you find that you'll learn a lot of things and to become who you are as a person. Um, yeah, for sure. That's great. So uh, what I took from that is, um, well, I, I like what you said about uh, finding who you are versus trying to fit in the mold. I think that's great. So following that curiosity, I think is, is key for many people. 
Um, and, and when you talk about like not discounting anything, it's, it's kind of that quote where uh, people say that uh, life hap- doesn't happen uh, to you, it happens for you. So it's really up to you to look at the experience and say like, well, why did I have that? And how would it help me? Because one thing that could happen is that, hey, maybe you'll start a ginormous tech company later on. So your computer science background would, would have been a healthy foundation for that, right? Uh, and to your point about um, parents wanting your, your best interests at heart, yeah, at the end of the day, they just really want you to be happy, right? What, with whatever you end up doing. Uh, they might have their own idea of what happiness is because through their experience, they believe that following kind of the traditional path with uh, like computer science or like doctor, lawyer, engineer, or whatever, that's what everybody should be doing. But if you provide them with kind of a, a clear plan or understanding of like, hey, this is what I'm, I plan on doing and, and I'm doing it uh, not just uh, willy-nilly. It's, it's, it's I'm actually a uh, structured plan and this is how I'm going to uh, move forward to become successful whatever success means for you, then uh, they, they usually have your um, interests at heart. But uh, yeah, ho- hopefully uh, you're not, because there's always the, the one parent that's not, <laughs> but, but uh, ho- hopefully your parents are, are supportive. And it sounds like when you communicate and have those conversations, uh, they become more and more. So thanks so much, Jan- Dan, for um, joining us on, on this uh, episode. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back to talk about some other things, maybe about writing, maybe about uh, creativity, maybe about gemology, <laughs> and then a little, learn a little bit more about that. So uh, thanks a lot for uh, joining us on, on the podcast. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. And I would love to come back sometime and uh, to talk a little bit more. And it's been very great. Take care. Thanks. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.